The work we will be talking about is David and Bathsheba. It is taken from a story about a king who's lust after a woman named Bathsheba and killed her husband out of jealousy so he could have her all to himself. This work was believed to be created somewhere between 1540 and 1549. This is a religious work that was created in the Renaissance from the Old Testament taken from the book of Samuel. In this painting, our eyes are first drawn to a beautiful nude woman sitting on the side of a fountain. It looks as though the woman is attempting to fill a container with water. The woman sitting on the fountain is not entirely nude. When you look closer, you are able to see a scarf-like drapery blowing around behind her head. The scarf is also covering her genitals. Behind the woman, we can see a man lurking, watching the nude woman fill her container with water. This man could be an attendant, her husband, or just a pervert watching this woman as she seductively sits on the fountain doing her thing. The man is dressed in a turban and black robe. When you look further into the picture, you are able to see a man looking out a window, admiring Bathsheba from afar. One of the arches is in this. We cannot see the man's face, but we can only presume this man is staring longingly at the nude Bathsheba. If you look at the nude woman, we notice that she is lighter than the person who is lurking behind her. This technique is called chiaroscuro, which is shown when you look at the person lurking behind the nude woman, as if the woman is casting a shadow over the figure behind her. There is an atmospheric appearance to the work. If you look at the background towards the double doors between the archways, you will notice that it appears hazy or blurry. Then, as the eye is shown to the foreground, the focal points, you notice that the image became more clear and in greater focus than the background. This is caused from the lack of light in the background of the work. Aside from the detailed tile floor in the front of the courtyard, the painting is shown in cool colors. The clouds especially are shown in this way, which leads to cast a shadow over the courtyard, almost to foreshadow something sinister is going to occur. Taking a look at the columns, there is a figure which seems to represent a demon, and beneath them are the damp souls he has claimed. It gives the viewer the sense that they are going to be watched at all times. Taking a look at the light and how it shines on the columns, it's almost like the artist wanted these demons visible enough in a way to show his power and how many souls he has collected. The painting is a real work, which is shown from the realistic body proportions that you can see in the nude woman. You can also tell where the light source is coming from, the way in which the light is hitting different figures, and how the shadows sit in the painting. It's a classical painting, and the artist used oil paint, which helps the detail pop out in the painting. The ethnographical exhibit from the early 20th century would probably be the most similar to David and Bathsheba. Both of the works show an objectification of humans. One is objectifying a tribe in Africa, the other is objectifying a woman by showing men longingly staring at her. The women in the ethnographical exhibit are also nude, but this is due to their tribal traditions. The people in the exhibit are also used as zoo animals, as we can see colonial men staring at these people. In conclusion, our two images show a message of lust and power lust. The David and Bathsheba painting shows the dangers of lust with the demons depicted on the columns and the look in the men's eyes closest to her and the man staring at her from afar. The ethnographical exhibit shows power over the people and the power they have shown over the tribes by putting them in an exhibit.